Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome. Today we'll be looking at uh, two men, two acts, two results. Two men that forever change the course of humanity. And we'll be looking at the first Adam and the last Adam. The first man and the second man. We'll be looking at their works and how what they did affected humanity even till this day that um, the works of those two men play a principal part in the life of every man and actually the destiny of every man is going to be determined by their response in terms of uh, their response in the second man to the to the works of the second man. So the first man Adam failed God in his purpose and God had to become the second man to redeem man back to himself. So let's get into it. In the eyes of God, there are only two men in the whole universe. There are only two men in the whole universe. These two principal men are Adam and Christ. Everyone, every human you see on the surface of the earth, in the eyes of God, in my opinion, they are either in Adam or in Christ. They are either in Adam or in Christ. Adam is the first man, the falling, representing it, representing the falling creation and now Christ is the new creation and so for those of us who are believers in Christ Jesus we are in Christ so Adam is the head of the old creation Christ is the head of the new creation and the Bible is about their effect on mankind very profound statement that the the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is talking about the works of these two men their work did not really uh, dead end in themselves but till date, it's still, people are still reaping the effect of those work. So God has what we can call universal men or representative men. So these two men are the universal representative men in the eyes of God, the federal head. So each of them represents the creation of God. So whatever the universal head has done, God will be dealing with the world based on that effect. So the whole world came under the condemnation, came under condemnation and we're going to look at Romans chapter 5 as we go on as well. And everyone came under the punishment because one man sinned, one man disobeyed God and in the eyes of God, every other thing was corrupted. And because in the economy of God, the God basically deals with one man. <laughs> so he dealt with the world in the Old Testament is an account of God's dealing with the world through the works of Adam, the transgression of Adam. And now in the New Testament, God now became the second man and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's now dealing with as many that believe. So what a great joy that we are members of the body of Christ. So the Old Testament is an account of God dealing with the world through the transgression of Adam. We mentioned this earlier that it's the misdoings of Adam. So that's why there were, and God had to call out a special set of people as his own people israel abraham was called out uh, in the called out race and just to uh, all, the, Israel was a type of the church and it's, God selected them, God uh, separated them because he wanted to do something bigger than Israel, which was the church. And of course, at that time, the price had not been paid. He had not come in the flesh. That is the Lord Jesus Christ and the last Adam. But there was a temporary measure and God was showing a lot of types prefigures and shadows of things that were going to be manifested when we cross over to the New Testament. So in the New Testament, the New Testament is a record of God's dealing with his chosen ones based on the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. Based on the sacrifice, the substitutionary sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God is dealing with you and I, as many of us that are believers in Christ Jesus, not based on our person, not based on our works per se, but on what the Lord has done on the cross of Calvary. And the work it did, the substitutionary sacrifice did not just end on Calvary, but it still continues today because part of his redemption plan is our uh, salvation is that having accomplished redemption it now comes inside of us to begin to live through us so that we can live a life that is well pleasing unto God. That's why Hebrews 13, 20, 21, give that prayer. Now in the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work, walking in you, that which is well pleasing in the sight through Christ Jesus. So it's part of the benefit we enjoy in the new creation that he didn't just die for our sin, but is now he has actually come inside of us by his spirit to walk in us that which is well pleasing in his sight which was a great for which was a great um uh, uh, i want to call it like 
uh, a big omission. I won't call it an omission, but I'll just call it that. We watch uh, a flaw. I think that's the right word I was looking for of or when Adam sinned, because of course, when Adam sinned, the spirit of man was deadened. God could not come inside the spirit of man. But now, in new creation, our spirit has been rebirthed. There's a regeneration, so we now have the spirit of God in us, enabling us to do what is well pleasing in the eyes of God. What a joy! So, as in Adam, so in Christ. So these are the two principles. That's why we go through the New Testament and we start seeing. Um, um, prepositions such like by womb, by womb, through womb, in him, in Christ, by Christ. We start seeing those prepositions very common because God is saying that I am dealing with you and whatever I'm doing, like for example, let's take Ephesians 1 for example. He said that he selected us in union with Christ and we see it all true that by Christ in him we live and move and have our being. And he actually even said in John 14 that in my name, whatever you ask in my name. So our identity, our true identity in the new creation as Christians is in Christ. Christ. Whether I'm going to pray, the prayer has to be in Christ. If I'm going to give thanks, 1 Thessalonians 5 18, Hebrews 13 15 say the, the sacrifice of thanksgiving with the fruit of our lips should be through Him, should be by Christ. Ephesians 5 18, also lay credit 5 18 19 as well, lay credence to that. If I'm praying, it should be by Christ. If I'm giving, it should be by Christ. If I'm going out to win souls, it should be in Christ. When I'm, it even said, in all you do, do it in the name name of the Lord. Colossians, uh, I think chapter 3 mentioned that, that in all you do, we should do all in the name of the Lord. That is, there is whether I'm speaking with my wife, whether you're speaking with your wife or your husband, whether you are relating with your children, whether at work in the marketplace, God says everything the new creation should be in Christ. And that's the blessing that we enjoy. So going ahead as well, you are either in Christ or in Adam by default. There is no middleman. So it's either somebody is in Christ. If they are not saved, they are in Adam. It's not a choice. We were all born into Adam by birth, naturally. Every man that came on the surface of this earth was born into Adam by birth, except the Lord Jesus Christ, because he was the last Adam. He was not the seed of a man. You know that very well, the mystery of incarnation. But every other person was born into creation in Adam. Then by new birth, by our accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, we now, God has now brought us or taken us out, translated us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. So Adam is the greatest liability to mankind. A liability is whatever probably um, <laughs> devalues you or devalues a company or something that they are owing. The opposite is an asset. An asset is what actually adds value to a person, to a corporation, to a nation. And assets are very important because in the corporate world actually the net worth of organizations are determined by their net assets is determined by their by their asset of course asset could comprise of physical asset or visible asset and invisible asset things like maybe the properties they have the land the equipment and what have you and also the invisible one patent goodwill and or intangibles things that cannot be seen but they carry a great value so the value of the lord the christ is the greatest value now any man we ever have in life you and I, <laughs> our greatest value in life is not the physical possessions that we have. It's the greatest treasure. That's why uh, 2 Corinthians 4 tells us that but we have this treasure in Athen vessel, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So what a great treasure we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. is the greatest asset to mankind, to anybody, to any family, to any nation, because it's the end. It's not just it's this asset based assets that people do have or corporations have, it actually has no value in the realm of the spirit. It might be valuable in a particular location or a country or in a continent, but over across in another in another realm in the spirit where it probably carries no value. This as and assets do of course they do lose their value with time depending on the type of asset. But this asset of Christ, the value never diminishes. The value is in this realm, the highest value in the physical, in the realm of the spirit, in the heavens, now in eternity future, this asset is the best gift that God can ever think of and that we can ever possess in life. What a joy. That's why I said we should rejoice in Him. Our joy should be rooted in the law. So these two shape the destiny of every human being. So every human being's destiny is shaped by these two. What a glorious joy. What a blessing. What a joy. 
So we are born biologically into Adam. So biologically, like I mentioned earlier, we are born biologically into Adam, but we are reborn spiritually into Christ. That whatever is born of the flesh is flesh. Whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. John 3, 6. So natural, our natural birth is true. We are born into Adam. No man has a choice over that. But we now have a choice for a rebirth. We have a choice because the first Adam sin in the Garden of Eden, uh, disobeying God. Now the last Adam has come, obeying God on the cross of Calvary and do, paying the price, being, the, being, being, being our ransom for the transgression of the first Adam. Because in the economy of God, whatever the first one did, every other person is going to bear the punishment. So, and we look at that in Romans chapter 5, because the punishment of Adam came on every man. And someone could say, well, I wasn't in the garden with Adam, but in the eyes of God, every one of us who are in him. But now Christ has come to be the perfect sacrifice and the scripture says, for as many that believe, in this work, or in this person, the Lord Jesus Christ, the punishment of Adam we no longer hold in their life. Of course, there's the good fight of faith we need to fight. So, a natural bat and a divine bat. So, the natural bat is through Adam, the divine bat is through Christ, which is through the Spirit of God. So, Adam's disobedience in the Garden of Eden, two universal representative men, Christ's obedience on the cross of Calvary. These two principal events actually shaping the course of mankind forever forever many are in serious and uh, many everyone's destiny is going to be determined by their response to this what the lord jesus christ has done on the cross of calvary if he hadn't come all of us will bear the brunt of the disobedience of Adam in the garden of eden but god in his love god in his mercy of course god did not create hell god did not create the lake of fire for man it's only for the fallen angels but now he has now come to give us a remedy a route a way out of the punishment of adam so that we we can actually fellowship with him now and in eternity future. So these two historic events forever changed the course of mankind. One left a negative consequence, the other provided an eternal remedy. Of course, the negative consequence is the disobedience of Adam in the Garden of Eden because God actually said that, of course, the, the toiling will be the order of the day for man and of course till date we still see that almost everywhere in the world but what a joy that he said that i have come the lord jesus christ the last adam who provided eternal remedy that i have come that they may have life and have it abundantly hallelujah to the lord jesus so let's look at Romans chapter 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And you're going to see this a lot. It's a lot in the Bible. But of course, we can't write the whole Bible on this single presentation. But what I'll be pointing out when it says that we have peace with God. That means there is no peace any man can have with God. If it's not true, our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. You can see another proposition by by whom so we have we have been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom that it is him so we enjoy peace and also by whom we have access by faith into this grace so there is no access to grace except by him the lord jesus christ so reading ahead in romans chapter 5 and now say but god commended his love towards us in that while we were yes i, I skipped some verses but because of lack of time but god commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us so god's love towards us because he made us in his image he didn't create us he didn't bring any man to the surface of this earth to suffer what adam did but he actually provided a remedy that that should not be the lot of any man of course they have to choose which uh uh we, we have they have to choose the lord jesus christ so that they will be exempted from the punishment of adam so God commended his love to us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood. By, you can see that preposition again, by, by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. That is, we are only exempted from the wrath of God. We are exempted from the punishment of Adam through our Lord Jesus Christ. Reading ahead. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by, again, the death of his son. So we were recon our reconciliation to God is by the death of uh, God's son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. 
and not only so but we also joy in god through our lord so our joy is in christ we have faith in christ grace is in christ everything in the christendom is by him it's by christ there is to take away christ from christianity is just another pagan religion because it is christ that is the very essence is the very the whole thing about christianity that's why we are called the body of christ because everything about Christ, everything about the church, everything about us as believers is Christ from the head to every part. Our very essence is our bread of life, is our river of life, our water of life, the fountain of life, the word of life, the tree of life, the uh, the word of life, the spirit of life, and what a joy. So we have not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received and enjoy our reconciliation. Reading ahead. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, so by one man, which was Adam, so it was through one man sin came into humanity, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Someone could say, that was that fair? How can one man disobey God and all of a sudden the whole humanity? Yes, because in the eyes of God, there are only two humans. They are represented, whatever the first one did. And another example of this might be Abraham in Hebrews 7, when God said that, um, the, that uh, Levite paid tithe in Abraham. Levite wasn't born the priest when Abraham was paying tithe to Melchizedek. But in the eyes of God, whatever Abraham was doing, he was not only doing it, but his generations were also doing it. That's why even the works of a man, for example, of a person, of a parent, if uh, even in science, you, we can see that, that sometimes the genetics of the parents or if some, you visit a doctor or someone visits a doctor and they start asking for the history, the health history of their parents, of their generation, because there's a tendency that whatever they are suffering from might be actually in that lineage. So in the eyes of God, what Adam did came upon humanity. So sin came through one man and death was the route through which sin was able to come into humanity. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression Adam, who is a type of him who is the type of him who was to come, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. But the free gift, the Lord Jesus Christ, is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense many died, many died in terms of a spiritual death, but much more, the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. So this is what we call justification, that God is now justified to say that, I said the whole of humanity came under punishment of Adam's transgression. To as many that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, his accomplishment and what he obtained and attained through the cross of Calvary will be in, the, the righteousness will be imputed unto them. So God is justified to do that because of our faith in the Lord. That's why I said, therefore, being justified by faith in that Romans 5 1 we read earlier. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification that means we are now justified the free gift came through one and which resulted in our justification we are justified by faith his blood has justified us for if by the one man's offense death reigned from the one much more those will receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness we reign in life through the one jesus christ so our reigning in life as well is through christ jesus and you watch this very well because the lord said in the scripture that those who receive so it's not by default that every man on the surface of the earth every man every woman is saved God says that it is those who receive it. That means there is something we must do, a willingful action. Sometimes I used to ask in the past that um, very early in my Christian life, uh, why is it that when Adam sinned, the whole humanity came under punishment? Okay, Christ has paid the price. Why is the whole world not enjoying it? It should be, <laughs> it should equate one another. Why is God saying that we must choose Christ? We didn't choose Adam. We were born into Adam. So if Adam got us into trouble, Christ should get everybody out of trouble. But the economy of God, an answer we could provide to that is, maybe I'm not saying it's the perfect answer. I guess God doesn't want to, um, God doesn't want to usurp the will of man. He doesn't want to even when he knows something is good for us, at least in that state, I've been seen as if he throws salvation at us, some 
some people will still blame him at the end of the day an example probably might be in the case of adam he was single in genesis 1 2 and he was without a spouse and god said it is not good for him to be alone and god brought what he believed was going to make him perfect and gave it to adam and what happened after adam sinned <laughs> the transgression with eve adam blamed god indirectly say it is the woman you brought to me uh, so maybe it would appear i'm not saying it's the answer it would appear as if god would have thought that wow i thought you needed a wife and you actually needed a wife so it is what i brought to you that made you perfect you now use it against me that was the cause of your sin well maybe from this day those who need salvation they will choose it by themselves so they won't blame me for forcing salvation on them just my opinion on that so i don't think god didn't want to force his will on any man so he said those who receive the abundance of grace will reign uh, in life through christ Jesus. therefore as through one man's of offense judgment came to all men resulting in condemnation even so through one man's disobedience that proposal true again through one man's righteous act the free gift came to all men resulting in justification of life what a great joy what a great joy so look for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous moreover the lord entered that the offense might abound but where sin abounded grace abounded much more so that as sin reigned in death even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through jesus christ our lord what a joy what a joy so in summary for this section in romans 5 we want to go through the highlight of it because we just read the scripture so the result of adam's transgression sin entered into humanity that is clear from what we read many were constituted as sinners though they probably did not do anything but every man was a fallen creature because satan had come into the heart of man satan has encroached in the demonic poison because of adam disobedience so all men were condemned to death death reigned over all men whether they wanted it or not because one man sinned so in adam all were made enemies of god we were made enemies we were brood of vipers in the eyes of god humanity and what a joy let's now look at the result of christ's obedience on the cross of calvary grace came to mankind Say grace and truth came through the lord jesus christ in john chapter 1 righteousness was imputed to many Many were justified unto life. If you notice that we're not putting the righteousness was imputed to all, all were no, because God says that those who receive it. So there is a there's a part in us that we have to receive the law so that we, we can we can benefit from what he did on the Christ on the cross of Calvary. In Christ, many were made alive. Made alive is being quickened from the dead. Our spirit man was regenerated. The spirit that died in Adam is now made alive because our spirit is a receptacle through which we relate with God. So we can now fellowship with god in our spirit man so in christ many were made alive many were many made children of god and so we were not just said he came to his own his own did not receive to as many that believed to them he made to be called the sons of god the children of god who were not born of blood or the will of man or flesh but who were born of god in that john 1 uh, 12 to 13 so going ahead as well so the first man is a so we are looking at we now want to look at the difference between the first man and the second man the first adam and the last adam the first man is a created being he was created in genesis 1 26 27 he was created and um, but the second man is the uncreated creator he's the one that created all things the first man is of the earth first corinthians 15 the second man is of heaven heavenly his origin is from heaven he even made the heavens and the earth the first man was made in the image and the, in the image of god after his likeness the second man is god himself so these are part of the difference between the first man we said there are two representative men before god adam the first adam and the last adam the first man and the second man christ being the second man the first man is a created being the second man is the uncreated creator the first man is of the earth the second man is of the heaven and these are two natures and what a joy that we were born into the first man by uh, our biologically into the second man we it's a spiritual bath where we accept the lord jesus christ so the second man is just god himself god was manifest in the flesh so the first man filled god rather than creating another man god himself became the second man 
So God did not waste time. God did not think of going back to the dust of the earth to make man another representative. After the first representative man failed God, God did not say, okay, let me create another man, whether this one will obey me. God decided to be the second man. That's why First Timothy 3, 16 says, Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached to the world, believed, by the gent uh, believed into the world and received up into glory. God manifested in the flesh. God became flesh. The world became flesh. Flesh. What a joy that God actually became the second man. So God in Christ became the new man. <laughs> God will not trust any other man apart from himself. So he had to, that's the mystery of incarnation. God had to come to become the second man because he wasn't going to take chances by creating another man in my opinion. So the first man failed God. So rather than God creating another man, God rather became the second man. What a joy, what a joy. And he manifested in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in the New Testament, we get into Matthew and we now see God manifest in the flesh. We see what God's original design was when he made man in his image and likeness. He was living among men to show them, this is how I ordained that man should be. But sin actually took man uh, millions of steps behind and now in showing us the prototype that this is what the ideal man was supposed to be to be a vessel and a container to carry God he now went through the cross to die so as to reproduce himself in his believers to as many that believe in him what a joy so in his first creation he made a perfect world and then put a perfect man in the perfect world but in the next in the new creation god reversed his method so god reversed the method of the new creation he started the new creation with a perfect man who would be the means of changing the fallen world to a perfect world so here's how we look at this in the in the old creation the first creation god made a perfect world everything was good in his eyes in genesis chapter 1 before he made man in genesis 1 26 27 so he now made a perfect man adam was perfect then because god said it was good so he put man into a perfect so first god created a perfect world now he made a perfect man and put a perfect man in a in a perfect world in the new creation god changed the order god reversed the order so rather than creating another perfect world and bringing a perfect man he started the new creation with a perfect man in the first creation, it wasn't a perfect man that he used to start. It was a perfect world, the perfect universe, the sun, the moon, the animals, and what have you, then a perfect man. But in the new creation, he started with a perfect man. And this perfect man was now to change the fallen world into a perfect world. The mystery, the depth of the knowledge and the mystery and the, and the wisdom of God. Oh, how searchable are his ways. So as the first man, Adam is the head of the old creation representing it in creation so as the first man adam represents the old creation representing it in a creation as the second man the last adam christ is head of the new creation representing it in resurrection because the new creation actually came from the resurrection of the lord jesus christ from that first peter 1 5 1 3 that says that um, the god who has begotten us unto a lively hope through the resurrection of our lord jesus christ we believe that the new creation came from the resurrection of christ the new creation was born there uh, I think in Acts 13 and Hebrews chapter 1 God said this day have I begotten you so he was the only begotten son of God before his death and resurrection upon his death and resurrection he became the first big first born first the first born son of God and we are now his many brothers so that is where we believe that the new creation is actually from resurrection. The new, that's why I told Mary as well in Matthew that hey, I'm going to my God and your God, to my father and your father. Because the new creation came forth from dead. And the scripture said the firstborn from the dead. So we are born, we are born believers in Christ Jesus. From That's why we go through baptism, the sacrament, whereby we'll, we are being taken away from the old creation and now into the new creation. So the second man is divinity plus humanity what a joy what a joy we can now look at some differences uh, or summary of what we've looked at today in uh, in just in, in an highlighted form so we said that there are two men two acts and two results 
Adam versus Christ, the first Adam versus the last Adam. As the first Adam, he was the first man God created. The last Adam was to end the old creation and Christ as the second man is to start the new creation. So we are either in Adam or in Christ. We are just doing a summary of what we've looked at today. Also Romans 5, 12 to 21 gives a free, vivid account of the works of these two men. How the scriptures were, uh, which we read earlier on about what this one did through whom death came by one man and now justification righteousness comes by uh, the other so we have the race of adam and the race of christ so we can say basically there are two races on the surface of the earth for now let's forget all the nationality or whether someone is from europe from america from africa wherever there are only basically two races in the eyes of god in my opinion the race of adam and the race of christ the race of adam is like if you are not a believer in christ jesus you are in that race of adam and of course it's just a great punishment and an eternal doom we are waiting anyone that is not in Christ and the race of Christ is just the believers in Christ Jesus because we are the body of the Lord Jesus Christ Adam versus Christ Adam is the greatest liability of mankind Christ is the greatest asset of mankind we mentioned this earlier as well also Adam broke the union of God and man through his disobedience on the cross of Calvary Christ brought God into man oh wow to me this is the greatest of all the blessings that he actually brought God into humanity which was God's intention of creating Adam as a vessel and telling him to eat of the tree of life. Because if he, will, if he, were, if he had eaten from the tree of life, he would have received God into it because we believe the tree of life is just a type of God himself, a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the vine, so uh, the true vine. So if he had eaten of that tree of life, he would have received God as his content. So he will not just be in the image and likeness of God alone, but he will also carry the very life of God. But thank God he came to give us life and he came to bring God God into man to all, all his blood. That's why I say, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he dwells in God. First John 4, I think 13 or 15, thereabout. Also, looking at the comparison of both, the first Adam is the last Adam, Christ. The first Adam is Adam, the last Adam is Christ. Adam was giving life, he was giving life. God breathed into him, he became a living soul. Christ gives life. I have come that they may have life. 1 Corinthians 15 45, we also say the last Adam became a life giving spirit. So he gives life. Adam was giving life. Uh, yeah, Adam is the head of the old creation. Christ is the head of the new creation. Adam was made, he made man a subject of Satan because after his, uh, he fell to the temptation of uh, Satan, man came under the tyranny of Satan. The kingdom of darkness now had its way all through man's life because the new master of man was now Satan because the first man fell to him. But Christ has made us believers masters of Satan. He has put the enemy under our feet. That's why Ephesians 2 says we are seated with him in the heavenly places, far above principalities and powers of darkness. So he now made us uh, masters over Satan. Of course, we resist him because he still goes about accusing brethren. But of course, we fight the good fight of faith. I said that we are strong, that you have overcome the enemy because the word of God dwells in you. So the more we fellowship with God, the more we have the word of God in our hearts, the more we walk with God, He is just going to remain subservient to us because uh, there's hardly anything He can do. We are just going to put the word back to His head. So Christ has made us masters over Satan that is under our feet. But there is the part whereby we need to build our capacity as Christians. It doesn't mean that we are uh, we we are we, are, we should live a careless life. So we have to build up ourselves in the Word of God, as uh, the Scripture said in Acts 20, 32, that therefore I commend you unto God and to the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you your own inheritance among them that are sanctified. So the more we fellowship with God, the more we saturate ourselves with God Himself. We just find ourselves that the enemy. Um, they say we, we put on the whole armor. Say, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. From that Ephesians chapter six verse ten. So, and the armor of God that was put there. So it doesn't mean that because we are part of Christ in the new creation, uh, the kingdom of darkness are just going to be fleeing away from us. No, no, no. There's the good fight of it. That's why God plants us in churches. Not like any military, any uh, any quality military arm of any government, any nation. There's a training. There are continual training that is given on to them because the enemy is all around. But God now accuses us by placing us in churches. Instead, he has given us apostles, prophets, past uh, evangelists, 
pastors and teachers who will equip us with all who will build us up they will edify us so that we can fight the good fight of faith so adam brought a curse on humanity christ brought a blessing on humanity hallelujah the blessing of the lord make it rich and added no sorrow adam is the source of human life christ is the source of divine life what a joy Adam made man an enemy of God. Christ made us sons of God, children of God. And in Adam was condemnation, in Christ is justification. So today we've been able to look at two men, two acts and two results. How two men shaping the destiny of humanity. How two men shaping the course of mankind. How two men determine the lot and the eternal destiny of every man. The first man and the second man. The first man, Adam. The second man, the Lord Jesus Christ. The first Adam and the last Adam. We said in the eyes of God, there are only two men on the surface of the earth. And these are the two men, Adam and Christ. You are either in Adam, you are either in Christ or in Adam by default. Those who are in Christ are those who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. For anyone that hasn't accepted the Lord and walking with Him faithfully, they are in Christ. Adam by default and now we also now looked at Romans the book of Romans chapter 5 how God was now giving us the description the, uh, the uh, a, a comparison and contrasting the works of Adam versus the works of Christ and we said that Adam's disobedience in the garden of Eden brought sin brought punishment brought death brought toil into humanity but Christ is the greatest asset that any man will have humanity will ever have through what he did on the cross of Calvary not just what he did on the cross of Calvary but what he's doing in in our life today we have a savior who didn't just save us outwardly but he's saving us every day he has come to become our very life colossians 3 4 say christ who is our life what a joy for this person we have in the lord jesus christ we also said that the first man failed god in his design in his purpose the first adam so rather than god creating another man god became the the the, the second man god became the representative man god became the second universal man he could not trust anybody to get the job done so why do we need that why did we need a second man we need a second man because we need somebody to get us out of that bunch of uh, calamity adam got us into god has said that all our righteousness is like filled the rats before him but what a joy that he came to become our very life if he had died on the cross alone and ended and said oh i'm done i've been able to get you guys out of the tiny of adam now go and live for yourself we would have said oh we still thank you that you got us out of this trouble but he took it millions of steps further that he didn't just die for us but he's now living inside of us today as his children calling us his temple calling us his house calling us his bride calling us his his branches him be divine calling us that we are the house of the lord that in him we live we move and have our being so today we can boldly say as a believer that we are in christ so as romans chapter 5 say therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ everything about us as believers in christ jesus is rooted in the fact that we are one with christ our prayer every prayer should go by him we pray in his name praises and thanksgiving is through him whether we are giving any spiritual sacrifices we are doing everything we are doing we should do all in the name of the lord say therefore that in all that you do you do all in the name of the lord jesus christ we've been saved by his blood his spirit is in us quickening us quickening our mortal body giving us the giving us the right wisdom is our wisdom is our righteousness is our justification is our sanctification is our refuge is our height is everything about us in this new creation what a joy to what the last adam has done hallelujah to the lord jesus christ Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.